Boards, games, boards, games, it's what we're talking about. Boards, games, boards, games, I'm not gonna shout. I am starting off this morning with a little bit of streaming. And I'm starting off the streaming with a little bit of singing. And today we've got in Paravel, we this is someone I don't know very well, but I'm excited to have them on. As you might be able to tell from this song, we're going to talk about Board Game Arena. This is a thing which has been bought by Yeah. If you are at the day, then it's been bought by Yeah. Um, and this is a place where you can play games. And we'll talk about the people who made it and all the things that came to this situation. What are those people's names? Board Game Arena is what we're talking about. Board Game Arena. I'm not going to shout. Hey, good morning. And Yay. hello. <laughs> hello, Sate. Thank you so much for joining us. This is episode 297 of Bezzy Beats and Board Game Blether. So our, on Thursday, it's going to be episode 300. I'm inviting people back on. And then Friday, I'm not having a show. But today, what are we doing today? We are discussing Board Game Arena with Ian Parovel. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, yeah, that's totally perfect. Okay, so we'll be talking a wee bit about the history. I know you weren't there right at the start of the company, but you were nominated by whoever operates the Board Game Arena Twitter account to come and speak with me. <laughs> and I thought, you know, you can talk about the founders and how it's developed into what it is, what Board Game Arena is actually standing for, what the aims are, and a wee bit about the Asmodee and acquisition, obviously. This is relatively recent news. I think it was just over a week ago. And that was officially announced. And yeah, Asmodee continues to become this bigger and bigger thing that that's me trying to become like a big octopus. And hello, yeah. Hal. Lovely <laughs> to see you as well. So that is what's coming up. So, Ian, who are you? What are you doing here? Why did you agree to come on this show? <laughs> Yeah, actually, I, uh, I agreed to come on this show because I need to improve my English. So that's always a good thing to talk uh, with some people from outside. Uh, and the thing is that I am the only one that is uh, quite communicative on the Board Game Arena team because the two others, the founders and the co-founder, aren't that, um, like, feeling that good with uh, being, like, publicly on camera and things like that. They're developers, so yeah, that's up to them. So that's why I'm there. So almost like the stereotypical tech heads very much getting into the coding, and then you came on as the third member of the team to yeah. make it a wee bit prettier, basically. Yeah, actually, that's... That, that's we tried. <laughs> and, uh, the thing is that uh, since the beginning of BGA, I was uh, working with them, like uh, with uh, Gregory Isabelli and Emmanuel uh, Collin, which are the founders and co-founders. Mm -hmm. And uh, since the beginning, as they are not designers or they, has, they have no clues about how to use like correctly Photoshop, so they had to have some use, so, so to have some uh, help. So I've tried to come up to tell them how to do things, but I was not um, employed by them. And then at the end of 2020, uh, no, at the beginning of 2020, uh, I became uh, employed by uh, BGA. Mm. But that's a long time I'm working with them. So yeah, you've got this interesting relationship with many people working in the board game industry. And hello, Robert. I'm glad that some people like myself are really excited to hear, have a wee peek behind the scenes. I thought we could talk a wee bit about your history. Obviously, you're known for doing other things within the board game industry. But then 
quickly come back to Board Game Arena. Yeah, of course. And where where do you want to start? Robert says, I've signed up to the dev site of Board Game Arena and been following the tutorials. When I get a chance, I will try to code a game from there, but I'm interested to know what being taken over for Asmodee means for BGA. We will get to that in just uh, maybe 20 minutes, within the course of this show. I've got, and hello, Tally, it is lovely to see you. Now, um, do uh, devs get... <laughs> There are so okay. many questions right now. Maybe you want to start by there, and if there is a break, like it's it's Let's up to you. Let's start like. off as we always do. Let me take a step back, and we'll get into all your questions in about ten minutes. But first, I want to talk about a wee bit about who you are, what you are up to generally, what a typical day for you is life, and let's talk about some. Recent highlights, recent highlights, <laughs> living life and seeing the sights. Recent highlights, recent highlights, playing games and other delights. Recent highlights. So, what have you been up to in the past week? What is life like for Ian Paravel? It's every day working. Like there is not a single day off uh, since uh, since the start of the COVID last year. I had like maybe like ten or uh, ten or twenty days off uh, since then, but no more so i it's mostly about working like i woke up i take a coffee turn on the computer if it wasn't already turned on and uh work half course uh work to trying to improve things uh answering on, onto the support because we are only four people in here and i also do the support uh as well as i can and uh working all day eating in front of my, of my computer. Actually, that's a bit sad. But yeah, spending the whole day uh, in front of my computer and then at the end of the day, just go to sleep and back to work the next day. Feels like the French way should really be to enjoy the food. Uh, <laughs> you know, this morning, just um, this is completely unrelated to Board Game Arena or anything, but this is a photo that I took in Cannes um in 2019 I, yeah 2019 and it, it feels like you're meant to take a bit of time you know have a slow lunch have you know a proper lunch break sit out and stop working yeah it happens but it's not like every day you have to handle a community of five million people so yeah <laughs> and we're only four so i guess it would be more comfortable if we were more people but that's not how BGA is working for now. But I really wish to take some time uh, later to, to have some good meal. <laughs> and yeah, I saw that you are actually hiring for a community manager right now. So there exactly. is an opportunity for someone who wants to join on as the fifth member of the team. Yeah, but exactly. As for me, what are my own recent highlights? Oh, I managed to do a quick jog around today. I've just been enjoying a wee bit more of Rummy, um, which I don't love that much, but it's just nice to spend a wee bit of time with the family, do you know what I mean, where I currently am in Glasgow. But let's get to brilliant thing, brilliant thing, what's a little thing which is brilliant. Now it started off when I talked about scissors, and scissors are a brilliant thing because they can cut through things, they can allow you to craft things if you want to make, you know, cards instead of having to print out so many cards, you can just cut out bits of paper, if you know what I mean. Scissors are just brilliant. But Agreed. For the sake of something more board gamey, and let's allow you to be a wee bit self-promotional, why is Board Game Arena brilliant? Uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Bonjour, Actually... Elaine. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> Actually, it's uh, I, I'm not sure that it's brilliant, but I think <laughs> it, it, it works. It works. It works. It, it, it does what it Very should Very modest of you. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's not brilliant. Actually, I think we were lucky on many sides with that because being the first... Uh, actually, the guys... Uh, something brilliant in BGA is the founder and co-founder, Greg, uh, Isabelle, and Emmanuel Colan. Uh, they're brilliant because actually, years ago, they just left uh, their uh, work mm -mm. and they quit their job and they just uh, made BGA and they had like literally no money for close to 10 years 
So that was a brilliant move, starting from nothing because they had a concept, an idea to bring board game to people. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a brilliant part of it. And that's why I, I always supported them. Having this kind of mindset to be like, you know what, I want to do this and having the desire and hunger to go ahead and do it. Yeah, that's always impressive, like to, to have people just leaving everything and just trying to to do their mm. way, like what they really want to do, what they're really thinking about. And yes, that's always impressive. You, you can just support people that have dreams, ideas, and that want to make them. You have to support them. I love that. At this. least at the beginning. <laughs> so it's all about having that commitment, having that willingness to do the hard work. And that in itself is a brilliant thing, having that desire and hunger. Yes, of course. Well, and the fact that the, the website is 5 million people, but there is only there was only uh, two people working on that one at the beginning. And now if the internship of uh, BGA, like we are only four people to manage mostly everything, we're so lucky to have many developers coming to help, uh, sometimes as volunteers, sometimes as, as paid, depending on the work to do. But yes, yeah, that's, that's quite amazing. Mm. And most of the community is self-caring, which is like, it's, it's helping a lot. Sorry about my, I mean, I my think English. I the board <laughs> game community in general, not specifically the board game arena community, but I think... Let's actually start the questionably quick questions. So if you have questions that oh, are no a little song. bit less to do with Board Game Arena, but you just want to hear about Ian Parovel or any of the previous work, then feel free to ask any of those questionably quick questions that you have right now. My first question that I always ask is, where exactly are you? What city? You don't need to give us your exact street address so people no, can that's come and talk to you. <laughs> that's but, fine. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm right to the way, uh, into the west of Paris, uh, Paris city in France. So yeah, right to the west. Okay, uh, left, so you're left. on the suburbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit on the suburbs. No, not that far. Actually, ten minutes from the center. Okay, and I guess it's eleven twelve Central Eastern time for you. Yeah, exactly. So I would like to, and I will ask you about your previous work um what's the thing that you've done art for that you're the most proud of <laughs> this one like cult express the train the 3d train was awesome to make like um uh, i actually i was um i used to be um uh, animation uh, director for uh, disney and uh, french television so I'm, I created my own 3D TV show for kids, which is about like uh, geeky culture and things like that. It, it, it wasn't that obvious on TV like 10 years ago. Like the podcast. Yeah, the podcast, yeah. So that was quite, quite a big success on our side, but didn't distribute it very well like internationally, but that was okay. Then I was working with, um, oh, you're doing some stretching, right? So I was doing some, uh, <laughs> I was doing some um, some games for video games and board games. So the Cold Express is a good example, but there is, there is many board games I've been involved to uh, as an art director or just like to give advices for publishing and stuff like that. Yeah, Deus, Deus was was a, was a big one because actually the uh, illustrator uh, left during the project, so I had to. Uh, manage quickly because the game has to be released for um, SN, I don't remember the date, but SN Fair, anytime. And uh, the illustrator left, so I had to handle things very differently to be able like to manage the game, which is okay because it's still one of the game, uh, board game from um, uh, Pearl Games that is selling very well. So that's, uh, that's good, good to know. I mean, congratulations and um... I get you illustrated this image with the monster president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, that was one of the first projects I ever started with. Yeah. 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 It's a long time ago now. But I worked for most of the French board game publishers, I guess, now. And now, actually, I'm still working for a Korean um, company that is a happy baobab, like doing toys oh, and yeah. engineering toys. Like, that's perfect. I like it. 
Is there a project that you can say that was the most fun? Colt Express was very good fun. Colt Express was very good fun. Was the best time I had uh, since then into the board game industry because it was all about being creative. Like there was no no rules, just like try to do the best we can because we had like no budget and trying to get the best of the game. And yeah, we, we did it. So I'm pretty like happy with this one. Good, um, good memories. So I want to ask a few very quick questions. If anyone's got any things and feel free to chuck them in. So firstly, what's your first memory that relating to board games? Like you mean during the childhood, for example? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Exactly. Risk. Risk. Yeah, risk. Risk. The thing is that I I am I, I have two brothers that are younger, and uh, I really wanted the the risk board game because there was this big nice illustration of uh, uh, Napoleon's uh, soldiers going frontward that way, shouting, and Inside the board game, there was all of these small uh, plastic soldiers, and that was so nice to have them aligned. And but I didn't know how to play for years, <laughs> so it was mostly a way for me to have a world map and put soldiers in it. And that that was that was pretty much it. And I think that was one of the first like souvenir I can have from uh, this time. So. I want to ask a few rapid fire questions. Firstly, meeples or plastic figurines? Meeples. Art or rules? Rules. Podcasts or books? Books. What's the last one you read? Um, Watership Down. What's the last game you played physically? <laughs> uh, actually, but working for the publishers also i play a lot of prototypes so i guess that's the last thing i played thing i played but for a real board games the last one i played uh, should have been a love letter okay well when was that are we going back a year <laughs> no actually it was with some friends like maybe two weeks ago i guess something oh, like nice. that yeah. who was the last person you spoke to in real life uh my mother okay and what would you say are one two or three of your favorite games like board game or any game yeah. um i was thinking board games but if you want to say uh, no, okay I, I, i'm okay for board game oh, i am totally fond of uh, carcassonne um uh, there's so many of course i, I guess seven wonders is a obvious pick and uh, actually, I have a crush for a flaming pyramid right now. Like, oh, okay. it's, on, it's on BGA. It's a small Kickstarter done by people from Sud or, or Finland. Don't remember. Designed by Norbert. I had Norbert on the show ages ago, I want to say. Oh, oh nice. And like, I didn't know that. And I think the game looks like nothing else. And I tried it and I was just amazed and actually one of the games we are currently playing on bga the most is flaming pyramid even on, onto the team because on the friday uh we have a special gaming time so we make sure we play some games and we always end up the meeting playing one or two games or uh, of a uh, flaming py pyramid that's just plain fun and yeah that's it over there if people yes, are curious right. about What's it's all about? And, you know, the final question, bringing it back to Board Game Arena, you've just said that Flaming Pyramids is your favourite, but what games do you think work best on Board Game Arena for you? Carcassonne. Carcassonne, because historically, the Board Game Arena was all about Carcassonne. And it's always the game we always care the most about, like... Whenever you play it on a tablet, on a phone, on a computer, anywhere, this game is playable, technically. Should, should, there is still some bugs that should remain like on the side, but on most cases, like 
Carcassonne is the best game to play on BGA, I think. So I mean, that's a huge game, like the you know, like the Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders to mm -hmm. me is uh, the the main issue with bringing board games to the uh, BGA is that you you can't always fit a table onto a screen, and this is the main difficulty we have, like bringing only the good informations on cr on screen and good informations for the player, like so you always know what you're going to do, what you have to do where you're at in the game. So yeah, it's it's always difficult to, to do that. But the good thing with Carcassonne is that there is like no table center. So you just put things all together and it works. So I think that's a, the best one. Yeah, thanks start uh, player Robert, yeah. So we've got, so we shouts out and thank you for again for listening again. So let's get to the main topic. I mean, we've already started there yeah. and um, to everyone watching feel free to comment ask questions from like follow all that stuff as we really get into this now i want to ask off um let's actually and hello alex um it's lovely to see you hal says i still think of board game arena primarily as the place i go to lose at carcassonne <laughs> so, same same because there is too many very very skilled players and it's so hard to win on one yeah now, so the best way to win on carcassonne is to play with friends actually you bring your worst friends and that's okay you can win them but if you play with people like coming from many different countries like on arena mode oh my god that's so hard to win a game let I'm just going to go through the questions as they yeah. are presented, as long as they are relevant. So Robert asks, do developers for Board Game Arena get compensated in any way, or are we all volunteers? So Yeah, so uh, it, it, it totally depends on uh, which game you're doing and how you're doing it. Uh, there is many, many different ways to bring a game onto BGA. Uh, so I will just tell you maybe about three of them, but there is as, as many different ways to do the game for BGA as there is games and publishers. So it's always different. So for example, you can just uh, do it like what is currently happening, like for some school, there is some teachers that tell their uh, student to go onto BGA uh, and develop a, a quick game, like a game like uh, chess or anything like that. And so that's an exercise for them. They can, uh, the, the teacher can then look at the games they made and uh, which one is the best and give them notes. So that's pretty fun. This is um, the, the lazy way. Like, yeah, I just want to have some time developing games. You, you can do that. Uh, on the other side, you can just grab, because there is a list of uh, board game license we have that are available. And you can just grab one project and tell, oh, I would like to do this one. So into that case, you just uh, ask to do the board game and actually you can start develop the game and you get compensation with a board game. Well, actually, we send a lot of board games to developers. So they have like, they can choose many board game. We can send them and, uh, and that's fine. Like there is some uh, people like uh, getting, uh, actually Yokohama has been done by a guy that is uh, retired. So it was a bit difficult for him, but he really enjoyed it, uh, enjoyed doing it. So in the end, he received board games for doing the adaptation of Yokohama and he's enjoying it. Uh, there is also a way where we are hiring developers for very specific use because uh, onto the board game list we offer, like you can uh, volunteer to do, uh, we have no like, um, the, the board games are here, Whoever wants to do it can do it. There, there, there is no obligations. But on the other side, we have some uh, publishers asking, I want my game on BGA. How should I do that? So there is two ways for them. First way is for them to hire directly their own developer on their side. And second way is to ask us to hire a developer to do it. So that's actually how it works. And then we do a quote and there is a pay and everything is normal that way. That's yeah, it. So that's it, 
With the premium games, I guess that's always going to be generally a paid project. The publisher yeah. clearly has enough um, of a budget and enough power to be able to say, okay, I'm going to pay someone else to do it, or okay, Board Game Arena, you take care of it. I guess Asmodee, when it comes to doing future Asmodee things, is that generally going to be done, managed by the four of you, I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the, uh, we, we've seen most of the messages about BGA and some of them make us uh, smile and some of them make us like very, very, very sad. Like people, actually the deal with Asmode is pretty clear, at least on our side, but we know it's a different thing when you're from outside and you need mm -hmm. to, you want to care about BGA and yeah, you care about the community and the way it's working and, and we do too. And the thing is that, what has been pretty clear with Asmodee, because uh, we know uh, things that have not been done the right way with some other part of Asmodee, and we want, we really want to not to be um, uh, treated like that. Like we want the, the BGA to be the same, to work the same, to work the way we envisioned it and to, to work the same way uh, that made his success. So the thing with Asmodee is pretty clear for us is as long as we are in, as BGA will stay the same. I mean, there will be- What do you mean as long as you are in? Uh, as long as, as we are in, like we are hired by Asmodee. Oh, because... as long as you are part of the Asmodee family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as the Asmodee family and the four guys that are actually BGA are still there. You, you're, you're sure it, nothing will change. Like, because we like the way it, it works. I, actually, yeah, it will change, but the good way. Like we will, mm -hmm. of course, improve uh, the website because it's pretty much out outdated, but that's something we can talk later. Like you had some topics about that. But yeah, most of the thing we say, like it, it will be still free. There is no reason for us to get uh, the free uh, model away. Uh, premium uh, will will stay uh, cheap. There will be no ads, like no more than what it, no more than what's on the website today. Like there is no ads. Uh, there is just some small banners on some very specific game from the publishers, just to help them. Because we're trying to help everybody, actually. So the publisher, mm. like from uh, the one, I guess it's from Potion Explosion, they run a Kickstarter. So they had, they wanted to have a banner on top to help push the Kickstarter. So that's why we, we put that here. But yes, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're just helping people. Actually, the good thing with BGA is actually helping, uh, boosting the sales of the board games. So it's a really real tool where people can just try the game and then eventually buy the game. And we know that even if you don't buy the premium, you buy the, you, you can buy the game after. And that's what happened most of the case. We, we see people like going out to the different shops and trying to grab a game they played. And we can see it makes a big difference. And of course, as they want to, uh, use that for their own board game, but for the other publisher, nothing will change. They can they can do the the same way we did since ten years. There is they, there is no use for us to change it. Hmm. So, just because we've started talking about it, let me ask you to reiterate the details as much as you are allowed to and comfortable saying. I'm not going to ask for exact numbers, but okay, so Asmodee said, okay, we like this company, we're going to buy it. Does that mean it's a one-time cash injection? Does that mean that there's going to be more money coming in every year from Asmodee? What does that mean for you? And in return, what's the benefit for Asmodee? Uh, I, of course, we cannot talk about the details of the deal, but what I can say is that actually, uh, Asmodee is the main um, 
uh, how do you say that? Stockholder, maybe like mm -hmm. that. Yes, shareholder. So, uh, Asmode, yeah, shareholder. Uh, sorry about my English. No, uh, it's okay. so Thank you very much. Asmode. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Oh, you make me blush. <laughs> so uh, Asmode is actually uh, having the company, but we are still managing the company inside. So the thing is that uh, Asmode actually can tell us to do things, but we can still tell them uh, what to do and what we don't want to do uh, with mm -hmm. BGA because the founder is still the CEO of BGA, so that doesn't change. Uh, and we're still working in. And uh, actually, we are working one way where we are giving advices to Asmode to help them improve their online communities. And on the other way, the huge advantage for us is to have a very big licenses from Asmode coming. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that game and this other game and that game with the ch -ch 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 and many, many, many things could come to the platform. So I can tell more, but yeah, that's very good news for us to bring more and more games. Oh, very vague, and no one would possibly guess what you are talking about. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> okay, um, and Robert says, whilst I'm not meeting friends to play new games i'm picking games on board game arena i don't know to learn and a few of those i end up thinking i'd like to own <laughs> oh my gosh yeah such cryptic hints roberts also says um let me actually change this i've seen the license list a few there look back to this isn't to do with asthma day this is going back to what programmers and developers are allowed to volunteer to develop a few of those games look like good options for a starting project. A publisher who knew I did iOS development asked me to look at the site to see if I could help bring one of their games to the site. That's really cool. So yeah. getting in touch. And I guess that's the sort of third party arrangements where it's down to the individuals off the website to negotiate that payment potentially. Yeah. And Robert and then... is one of the offer. Oh, sorry, I'll let you. No, 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 that's fine. I, I was just like going to add something like because the actually developing an app like specifically for iOS or Android or anything like that or Steam is uh, an, an option that is uh, costing a lot, but a mm. lot and especially for small publishers. But the good thing with, B, B, with BGA, which is brilliant, you asked for something brilliant, uh, actually is that the game never dies on BGA. Like, as long as there is a developer, it's easy to maintain, to keep it online. It's not like you need to update it and push it to the stores and buy it again if you have different devices. The game can, could live forever on to BGA as long as there is a worldwide web. So mm -hmm. that's a good point. That, this is a very good point. And Sorry. Robert says, Roberts is also one of the alpha testers, which is a lot of fun, and being able to make suggestions to make the game interface better. So I think you're right that we have to appreciate all the volunteers. Now, how do you... Okay, here's a tricky question. How do you make sure that you're not exploiting people? Do you have any principles in place to say, okay, if we are ever demanding things of people, you know, okay, we can't do that. How do you make sure that, because there is so much voluntary labor in the board game industry, like of I course. use it when I go to conventions and people are helping me and people pitch in, but how do you make sure that that doesn't become abusive? Be, being exploited for many years, I can, I can relate to that. So I can, uh, I can relate. So I think uh, there is, always people that can, that can feel uh, exploited. Like, and sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. And th that's mostly a matter of feeling. Like as, as long as you enjoy doing something and you don't ask money because for many reasons, like could be just, I enjoy it. So why should I ask money? Some people are like that. Or some people are just like, uh, they didn't think about asking for money. Uh, to me, is there is so many different ways people can uh, can take things and give things. 
it's all up to them. The only uh, obligation we have on our side, at least on BGA, is to be uh, the most clear and the most transparent we can. Like, mm. uh, actually, you can do whatever you want on BGA. Like, you want to develop a game for free, you can. You want to ask a developer to develop his game uh, asking for money, you can. Uh, you want to uh, to to do a first game just for uh, as an exercise to see if you can make a living with BGA, you can. Uh, it's open to everything. The only thing is that we don't... I think we're not cheating with people. We're just like saying what it is. And the thing is that people are like, Oh, they might hide anything, but no, actually, we just tell what what it is currently. Like, what you want to do, what you want to get, of course, there could be some people like doing it for free, but you also could be paid if you just uh, do it the right way. So it, it's up to everybody. I I'm going to ask you to drill into that for just a minute or two when you say yeah. if you just do it the right way. So if someone is out there thinking, hey, I would like to do development um, for and get money from it, what is the right way? Actually, the best way to start for a board game is to go on to um, uh, studio.boardgamernet.com. Uh, studio is actually the um, front page that is... Says, absolutely disgusting front page, but that's awful front, front page. But this is a place to start as a developer. Once you get into that and you get your hands onto uh, the website, we have a full documentation in English that is not perfect, but we have some uh, one of the developers that is uh, from BGA that is answering questions through emails, if you have any questions about the development. And yes, yeah, that's the one. And we try every time to uh, to 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 give any information you 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 should find for the development. Then second one is to choose your board game. So there is two ways. Inside the website, you can check the list of licenses available, or you can contact a developer, uh, uh, no, not a developer, publisher. And once you contact the publisher, you can just make a deal with him, like no problem with that, or you can come grab a license. All up to you. So it seems like it's almost becoming um, its own platform. Well, it kind of is a platform rather than one thing. It shouldn't be. It's kind of like, OK, you can equate this almost to iOS in the early days. Is that your aspiration? Is that what you want? That eventually a lot of the money changing hands is being done off the back of it and people are working out Three reasonable ways to get paid for doing this work and that work to as little studios. It it depends on which game you want to bring and how do you feel comfortable with your developer. But there is like many ways. It, it's just a mat matter of like sharing. Uh, it's all about the shares. Like doing mm -hmm. an app for iOS. Is a good thing, but the, um, the main issue doing that is that you have to handle the promotion, advertisement on it, uh, mm -hmm. keep keep it up online. So you have to hire the developer again and again. And uh, for costs that are like you have to also handle the promotion. So going from maybe fifteen dollars to ten dollars to like and having the game always updated, it's way too exhausting for small companies like most of the publishers. So, 100%. Yeah. A quick hello to Nicholas. And I would like to get back to the very start and ask you, how did Board Game Arena begin? What was the original vision of um, Gregory and Emmanuel? And Actually, actually it's, qu it's quite short and interesting at the same time because they started do, uh, they wanted to do a, a online board game community. That has always been the goal, like to have people come together. So there was an option to make like a four square thing, you know, like finding people and the, to play together. That was the main idea. And then they came up 
like they were a bit bored. So Gregory actually started to do uh, Carcassonne uh, online. And because it was working so well, actually, uh, he, get, he got into contact with Hans and Gluck to make it official. So that's pretty much all, uh, how it all started. It was uh, it was just a community community website at first. Then the board game Carcassonne, they had no clue about what they were doing. Like they were <laughs> just putting the board game online, and oh, that's funny, it's working. We have Carcassonne playing. Oh, uh, maybe we should care about like the license. Yep. Uh, maybe we should uh, get. Uh, oh, I made some good tools so we can move things around the the screen. Okay, so let's make another game. Which one could fit? And then and then and then more and more games. They started. They they did all everything by themselves uh, from the beginning. So just to um, if you click on the team, so here are the four full time members, I guess. Yeah, and exactly. Then we get into all the moderators and let explain to me what's going on here. Uh, moderators are simply people we really value because they are uh, uh, fluent in one or more languages and they have some time to spare on to BGA and they are having like a lifetime a premium subscription for helping us. So that's fine. They have like to take care of the moderation, like uh, people uh, insulting each other or bad behaviors or cheating, maybe sometimes it happens. So they have to uh, care about that. So we have a sort of meeting where we play together. We just update ourselves about what's going on. And uh, we have a full um, interface for them to moderate. So every time you send a, a report for any player mm -hmm. or anything like that, you have people behind because we can't automate that and we don't want to automate that. Mm -hmm. because we are like, it's easy to say, like, Apple, we are a human company based on human feelings and things like that. But that's the, that's the real stuff into BGA. Like, whenever we can, like, uh, automatize things, we do it. But for moderation, it's such a special thing. And we really want to care about the good manners onto the website. Uh, that's why we really want to, uh, we, we have humans to take care about that. So yeah. they have a free premium for doing uh, 10 to 50 uh, reports uh, a week. I mean, that's a good, that's quite a bit of work, to be fair. Yeah. And it, I think you're right that this sort of thing, it just can't be automated. I actually had to, unfortunately, report someone the other day because playing Love Letter and then they just said, what, 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 what about, you know, I don't, you know, like 30 times um, over and over and it's like and then they started telling the other person what I had in my hand when they looked at my hand so it was like one against two and that's sorry about that yeah it happens <laughs> but this of, of course this happens sometimes happens um it's always going to be the case and sometimes when you're part of a community whether it's did you feel I mean, did Gregory and Emmanuel have any idea? Because it sounds like it was just, okay, we'll go through and we'll see what happens and we're just doing this for fun and almost by accident. Did they actually have any idea of how people would, did they try to predict how people would interact with it, whether it would grow, whether it would be strangers or would it be friends meeting together? Do you know what I mean? No, that's exactly what I, I told you before, is that there are two developers, they are just like big dreamers and workers, so they are just like looking at the functions, like, do we need that function? Yeah, okay, people can add them together, okay. But they didn't care uh, at all, and they didn't care <laughs> uh, about like how people could uh, uh, misbehave uh, with, um, with the website. So... Uh, I'm there <laughs> to take care of that, like taking care of the pronouns, which is really important and that is not available yet to the BGA, uh, as well as for the friend re request, because actually you can add any people as friend, but you're not friend, but you, you're actually following him. It's mm. not like your friend. It's only when you, uh, you too add, uh, as friend, uh, Sorry, a bit tired. When you add each other, yeah, then yeah, you are exactly. officially friends on each other. Yeah, that way. But we have people pretty pissed off by being, oh, he added me as friend, but I don't want it. But 
that's okay because he could not interact. But of course, he could interact with you because he can send a, a chat, a chat private message. So that's messing up with your life. And there's many, many functions uh, we need to take care of and that will be improved in the next month. Uh, especially removing the wooden background I can't handle anymore. But uh you don't like woods. I actually quite like this wood. <laughs> it will stay for people who liked it. But uh, <laughs> uh, as you can see on the new uh, board games, we put a uh, new background behind. Mm. So that's going a bit to change. But if you want to keep the wood, uh, I will make sure you can you can keep it. Uh, yeah, and, and the thing is that um, they are mainly focusing on new cool functions and the board games themselves. But every small details that are mis making people life not easy is secondary. So I'm there exactly mm. to put what needs to be put in front of changes before anything else. Because now we need to stabilize the platform, providing every, uh, like the most uh, basic uh, functions you should have on that kind of website that is not already implemented. Okay, Alex has actually got a really good question, whether you have anyone dedicated to user experience. Yeah, me. the only issue about that is that actually I couldn't have worked onto the website itself because there was so many work to do with a new user coming. Uh, but we are currently developing um, a new interface for the website because it's Messed, messed up. Actually, this website has no uh, user experience designer since the beginning. Like it was all put together by developers that were just looking at things like, oh, we need to add this mm -hmm. and that and this and that. And that's why we have uh, stupid things like. like uh, I can't. Yeah. I, look, I look at this game and then I read the rules and I say, okay, down. I, there's a big button for download the rule book, but really, if it should be like, okay, click to check the rules. And then if I want to play the game, how do I play the game? I need to add it to my favorites and then go back to play now. This there is, should be a the, button to play the game. It's like, yes, uh, it's, yes, of course. The thing is that the website evolved from a very strange one since we had to uh, develop the new lobby system where you could select the type of game you want to, to, to play. And then we had to have the uh game uh, game page where you uh we used to have a play button but people usually uh it, it used to be there but people clicked on it and as it brings them to the lobby uh, using their automatic options it was a bit of a mess so to get rid of that we just removed the button the play button uh, on the page to force people to use the lobby because this is the way we wanted people to go there. But it will totally change with the new website. I can assure you that 100%. So actually, Borgamana is a kind of a Frankenstein beast. Like there is some uh, head from there, leg from there. So that's why it looks a bit like a mess, but that's it works. So. We really want to take care of the next version of the website, which will be totally new and clean and easy. And of course, you will be able to play directly from the page game. But sorry I about I am that. hearing um, a lot of acceptance of the shortcomings, and that's really good to see that you're not here to say, oh, yeah, it's all great. You are here saying, yeah, it works. It's good enough for now, and we are working to make it better. I really appreciate that. And it hasn't yet developed into this crazy behemoth let I, okay i want to ask two things firstly um who's this fourth member of the team uh fourth member joined uh at the end of the last year like maybe december or something like that he's called uh, yuritsa and uh, he's a uh, a uh, board game man uh, board game manager so he's the one taking care of publishers uh developers license putting things all together and ta-da he's taking care of that 
so okay we've got someone for license you're hiring someone for community management and as you get more people you will be able to do more of this stuff uh, uh, actually actually to be clear about the um, community manager it's because actually i'm doing it uh with like many many different functions like i i said we're only four we are mm. all doing many many different things the only issue is that oh. i really want to work onto the interface the user experience but i'm also taking care of the support and there is so many support to do actually that i can't get uh, into ux as much as i would so that's why we're hiring uh, somebody so he can take care of the support the right way and that way i can have time to work on the ux for games and the website that's that we can do it another way. So that's why we're hiring a community manager. I wanted to talk about Board Game Geek because Board Game Geek um, is this big beast and it's been going so long and then, and I love Aldi, don't get me wrong, and not in a romantic way, just, you know, I really admire what Aldi has done with Board Game Geek and yeah. it's brilliant what's been done, but now it's saying, okay, let's change this thing or let's try to make a new front page and it's so difficult and i understand it's become so big is board game arena at risk of doing these things too late do you i guess it is it still at the point where it can be easily changed is what i'm asking <laughs> this is actually uh one of the best question ever asked on bga so the um, the biggest deal actually uh, taking care of the ux is taking care of the historical players like the main base that is pretty old now we have uh, like maybe close to a million people like that are there since close to 10 years so yeah it's it's quite a big base and every time we change a single thing even if it's for the best uh you can you you can't get all of them happy. So they complain, but they try to understand. And that's why we did so, that was, that's mostly part of the reason we have that stupid page without a play button on it. Because for two reasons. The first one is development time, because we wanted to uh, give that time to other projects, games and things like that into BGA to make it more efficient, like the server side, allow to get more people and things like that. And on the other way, it's to uh, to be sure that um, people using BGA from a long time doesn't get too disturbed, even if it's for the better. But the next step into BGA will be to uh, provide, in fact, sort of two websites. One will use the historical way and one will be the new way. So that way you can switch from one to the other and see which one fits the best for you and we will bring slowly the old one to the new one so in the end we will only have one you know what i mean mm. we will have sort of two access to interfaces this one you don't want to one. alienate your old players so even if the interface is different you want the coding to allow people with the old interface and the new interface to still play together yeah yeah of course of course and they they will play together but we really need to do something uh mm. clean clean with the website like it's a mess there is the news there is on the front the, the wall post where there is many different things your own uh profile you can get all you want it and with the privacy information so when you're online when you're not like you have the right to do that and that's totally understandable to you want that but it takes time and the thing is that there is so many things to change we need to do a new version, but we will try to do it the, uh, how to say that, uh, the sweetest way we can, of course. Mm -hmm. where, where you, won't, you won't wake up in the morning and see a whole new, new, whole new web website. It, it won't happen. Sure, sure. I mean, with, once people have spent potentially years trying to navigate and learn how to make things work, sometimes then it's like, oh, you took away this functionality and now, even though I wasn't using it in the way you thought, actually I was doing it in this weird way. So I remember, um, yeah, Newgrounds, there was some small functionality where, yeah, I couldn't order my own reviews by rating. So I'd reviewed on Newgrounds 
a very old website. I reviewed thousands of games and animations, and then I like to click them, see, okay, these are the ones that I rated 10 out of 10. Maybe I will play them again, like, once every couple of years, I look at them and say, okay, yeah. those are the ones I really like, maybe I'll watch them again, and then, but then they took away that functionality because no one was using it except for the people who had thousands of reviews, yeah. and, you know, I was in the top, um, like, maybe 50 reviewers or something on the website, so... Well, it but was just I, annoying. I, I can totally understand that. But on, on the other way, like you 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 should get rid of some functionalities if you have nobody to like uh keep them up alive and up to date mm. and keeping with the system is always difficult. But <laughs> the the big issue I have on BGA is actually uh, most of my work is, uh, onto the UX is actually fighting with uh, Greg, the founder because he's the one that takes care about the very small uh, functionalities, like this one you, you just told. Like, he knows that there is a very small percentage of people that is using the manual function on 2BGA, and that's why he always wants to keep it. So I always have to handle uh, everything he wants to keep, but also make it look simpler for others. That's why we have like the advanced settings uh to be able to keep that kind of way so i can't guarantee it will stay like it is and maybe it will oh, no, no, uh, the, no 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 but wh what i want to say is that the functions we have will probably stays but a few clicks away but that's it for most of the case nice and i think that hiding things behind an advanced menu makes so much sense to make things approachable if I, one thing that does pop into my head, I'm just going to say it. So lots of the tutorials, by the way, don't work. And they are so messed up, even for the premium games. I was yeah. trying to do the tutorial for Love Letter. The good thing for you is that we will we will put a play button. Uh, I mean, I don't need the tutorial for Love Letter, but um, if I did, then it's useless. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But, uh, anyway, so um, let's talk about Board Game Arena, what it is, and we have not... So, obviously, this is... People who are watching this will know it's a rules-enforced online place to play board games. You've got Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia, which are, you know, big 3D physics-based environments. It's not rules-enforced. It's You need to understand the rules of the game. And then you've got something like BoardSpace.net or Yucata.de, which is kind of similar to what Board Game Arena is trying to do. Now, what? how would you compare Board Game Arena to everything else? And what makes Board Game Arena stand apart, if anything? Like you, you, actually, you can compare BGA to a Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator, because first, for Tabletopia, we are friends, because we don't do the same thing. We don't do like the same project or oh, stretching time yeah we don't do uh, the same kind of uh, projects like they do the board game by their side uh, they have no rules enforcement so that's totally different stuff but the good thing for them is that they can have prototypes of board games and i know many people are actually using it to bring uh, some prototypes and to have them tested so that's uh, that's good for them and we like them we use them sometimes so yeah that's pretty fine uh, for Yukata and uh, Boite à Jeu and all of that kind of website, uh, we are doing some games. Uh, they do. They are doing their games. I think the the main difference is about the community and the, um, the way they are open to the public. I mean, it's more like an insider job where they have their own development doing one or two games. And that's mm. fine because... People that don't like BGA could go there to play. So that's totally fine to us. Um, also, we know we don't handle the game the same way. Like, there is board games we have uh, in common. Like, they have and we have, like Marco Polo, we, they used to have it. And uh, they did the interface a bit differently. And we did a bit differently. And it's all, it could, could be a matter of choice for the gamers. That, like, actually, you want to play it differently because they did it the way you prefer. No problem. You 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 can go there too. And I mm -hmm. wish they will have 
uh, because of, of the announcement of uh, BGA being bought by Asmodee, uh, we will have people uh, flying away. Actually, it's not happening, but there, there should be some. And uh, that, that would be good for them, actually, to have more games too onto their own platform. It's 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 never a good option to be the the only one onto the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and diversity is only a good thing. And you're right. I know that there's some big publishers. I'm not going to name names who working with distributors who at the point that the distributor in the UK might have been bought by Asmodee, they say, okay, we're no longer working with you, Greenboard Games Company, because we don't want to be working with our competitor because they are also a publisher. And I'm not here to talk about Asmodee, so let's sweep that under the carpet. Okay. Um, but, you know, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing for this, you know, having an entire vertical slice, which is interesting because they do have from, I don't think they own any manufacturers yet, or do they? Uh, from uh, for Asmodee, you mean? Yes. And uh, I'm not sure about that, but well, I like, don't Apart from manufacturing, more. you know, they've got everything else. They've got design publishers, you know, in-house designers, you know, retailers that they own even. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. But the, the, the thing is that uh, Asmodee, since the beginning, is a, is a company that has been made by game designers. So they may not be that much interested into manufacturing everything themselves. Because manufacturing process is a whole different process. Actually, Asmodee, I'm pretty sure, don't just my own feeling, but I'm pretty sure they can't. Uh, make a factory run uh, 24, uh, 24 hours a day uh, just for their own product. Not sure about that. Maybe they could, but it, it needs a lot of... Uh, like Because people are free in Tuas Modé, mm -hmm. just to make it clear, like uh, Libelud, uh, that is a French studio uh, that has been bought by Asmodee, is actually doing whatever they want. Repo Production, uh, production doing Seven Wonders, they actually do whatever they want. So they're free to choose any factories to work with. Uh, they can manage their own stuff by their side. Like Asmodee is not putting a gun on their head, just give it to me. Uh, it's just like they do whatever they want. And of course, they try to do it uh, with Asmodee whenever they can. But for everything else, they are free. So. Yeah, Asmodee has no no interest into having like the whole board game production, but that could happen in the end if they are as big as Hasbro. Mm -hmm. If they happen to be as big as Hasbro, Lego, or Mattel, of course you try to improve this because this is the uh, uh, the last frontier uh, to get uh, to to be a mega corp, like having the whole. Uh, industry inside. But actually, that's not the case. Asmodee doesn't own... Uh, Asmodee owns a lot of licenses, which is true, mm. but they don't own people. <laughs> of course, you know, people are free to come and go within yeah. these companies as they want. Um, I put in here, what are the challenges of rules enforced board gaming platforms? So specifically something where you need to have the computer only letting you do what is permitted by the games. I mean, you've got your own beta testing. What's the challenge of making sure that all these work? And can you talk a little bit about that process? Uh, the, yeah, the, most of the challenges we are facing with the um, rule enforcement bo in, in board games is that we have uh, to read the rules and to play it. <laughs> and no, no, <laughs> it seems like fun at the beginning, but when you do it on 20 games a day, oh, mm -hmm. it's so exhausting. So basically what we do is that uh, we have um, the developer, we have the publisher, publisher sends them, send us the rules and we just read them at first to like manage like how many components, what should we have to do with that game? And that's okay. Then we are looking for a um, developer who could take care of the work, 
because depending on like is there any combos is there any is there anything related to customs how many players uh, are up to that game like two to four is different stuff than two to twelve so mm -hmm. who we can give this game to and then uh they start working from the um actually a very good hint we have doing that sort of uh, adaptation is taking the exploded view uh, most publishers give with the game. Like, this is the way the game should be displayed on a table uh, on the perfect way. And we try to bring, bring this into the website. And we try it. This is the uh, alpha test. Like, we try to do and to check if the rules are OK working with the game. And if everything is looking good onto the table on your computer or your phone or your tablet, and we make sure everything works. Then next is beta test. And beta is where we ask ourselves, how can we improve it without breaking the whole feeling of the board game onto the table? And then it's release time, and the game is released. And we have people asking, why did we do that change? And once they get into that, they are pretty happy, I guess. So yeah, that's how it works. Uh, simple and complicated at that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But there are some games where it's a real headache, like for um, for um, for Welcome to. Welcome to was a real challenge because that's mm -hmm. a roll and write game where you have the cards. Welcome you to have... your perfect home with the. Yeah, game. exactly. And you have your own uh, paperboard where you can write signs into it depending on the card you selected. And the thing was that you needed to, uh, the game is actually playable from one to 100 players, which will maybe happen on BGA one day, but 100 is something very big to, to manage. But the thing is that you also have to have a view uh, on the other players' board. So we had to find ways. So at first it was like displaying all of the papers from the different player on the same page. So you had your own uh, paper on front and the other one onto the bottom. And it was like too too big because you had to load every page from the paper. So we came up with the idea of clicking any player you want to see because of, of their uh, inter intermediate score, because you need to want to follow. And we added the feedback at the end of the turn so you are, you know who which places has been played by different people. So yeah, every time it's a new challenge, we try to improve the things the best we can. Sometimes we fail, uh, but the good thing is that uh, it's not a web develop, uh, it's not a iOS development or Android or Unity or anything like that. We can roll back or come back and uh, redesign the game. That's actually what happened to Anabi. For Anabi, if you want a quick quick story about Anabi, is that the game uh, ran actually perfectly well on BGA. The only issue we had is that it played, but not as the game is uh, played in real life. It was played with a small tableau where you have like uh, just the signs to click, and it gives a totally different feeling of the game than than what the real game is. So for the new edition of the game, we did an upgrade. Uh, so people can play it like the real game, having the game in front and turning around. And, but we know, yeah, this is the um, expert version. But we know that people were playing using finesse and the right order. Like the game wasn't meant to be used, but how it was done on BGA uh, working that way. So that's why we had to make the new version. But also left the old version in it. So if you click on to the game, on the top right menu, you can actually change the way it's displayed and it totally changes uh, the way you play with the game. So that's one of the, of the challenges we had to do. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I had one question which seems to work well, which is, do you think we will ever have a word game or a speed game that's working well we have word game. Uh, we have a uh, letter tycoon, which is quite good actually. Ooh. I quite like it. But we have um, some challenges with uh, letter um, with letter letter board games and uh, quick games. 
Um, main issue with letter games is taking care of the many different languages series and uh, many different dictionaries. Some are open, some are not. So we might need to have like a by player check. So you need to check the word if you accept it or not. So that could be the most efficient way for us to have a words game. But yeah, it's one of the most difficult games uh, to put onto the platform. So it will come because we have many people asking for Scrabble or anything like that. As soon as we get the licenses, yeah, we will do it. If you have never played Letter Tycoon, actually, you can play it. It's quite fun. Actually, you just buy the letters. So if you buy the A, which is quite expensive, every time somebody uses A, uh, you get money from it. It's quite good. Oh, your your mic is shut, uh, Bez. I'll definitely be checking that out. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. if anyone, yeah, Alex, by the way, says regarding Kanabi, I wish I had those reminder tokens in real life. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm it, really but... surprised by this because I was talking to someone who was um, thinking about adapting one of my games and saying okay well words games it doesn't seem like i can work out how to do this there isn't really an online dictionary so i'll be really interested to i don't want to take up the interview we're talking about how to do a words game in here but can you give us a quick 30 second explanation of how this one thing was done behind the scenes Oh, actually, I don't have. Uh, we, we are we are having so many games. Uh, I'm not following step by step for every game. That's totally but, fair. But but but, but, but the, the the good thing to know is that actually uh, you have some open dictionaries. And the thing is for Letter Tycoon is that people can tell if yes or not the the word is okay. So that's mm. a very good way to take care of a word game. Uh, not having to uh, care of a dictionary. Like, everybody votes. If that's okay, everybody tells, like, yeah, it, it exists. That's okay. You can accept it and, and play it. Of course, you have to play with people that want to play it fairly, but most mm -hmm. of the people playing with uh, world games, of course, try to keep it keep things fair. Do you think that means that such games aren't going to ever have a tournament? Because I noticed that you know, lucky numbers. I actually played it so much to get my rank to 100 just so I could join in the tournament. Of course, it's fun. It's silly. Do you know what I mean? But with a, when you're in a tournament, do you think people are going to start being super competitive? And The, the, the real problem there, Bez, is that there is no, no way for us to check uh, who is cheating or not. And it's so easy into a world game just to have some tools on the side to do that. Actually, when I was on, on the college, I used to be on a Scrabble uh, club and uh, it was really interesting. And I've seen that it was ruined uh, by the online gameplay because it's so easy to take an online dictionary, type in the few letters you're having and have random words coming out and that fits the best way to make the most points and it breaks everything. So I'm mm. not sure that online board game for the world game e for tournament. Uh, I want that to happen, but I am not sure it will be any good because if we have any people cheating, like it's already happening with chess, which is a big problem. And not only for us, but also for bigger um, chess. Uh, yeah, using like, robots because it's so much better to use a computer and let the computer yeah, and, and the fact is that it's, it's really easy. Actually, you just have to take a, a game of chess on a computer, a very good one, and you just play two players on the side while doing one on BGA, and you just do the move of your opponent on, on the other game. And it's so easy to have a robot playing that way. You just have to report what the robot is doing on this game uh, to BGA, and we have so many cheaters into that, and we can't... Like, I, I, I think... Okay, uh, something I, I, I'm deeply concerned uh, is that I think the most rules you put, the less liberty you have. So mm. if you want to try to get rid of the cheaters, you have to put more rules, more check, and this will not improve the life of the real players, like the people that want to do it the right way. So you're messing up on the both sides. One, you're not... Um, 
you're not locking the cheaters outside and you're getting the actual players that that are playing very well uh with strange verification system and uh i don't want that i mean that's okay some people cheat that's okay uh you can find out uh who is cheating that's okay but i don't want to ruin the life of people that just want to enjoy the game so we just have to make our best to manage this one but not putting strict rules to enforce anything that way so that's why it's difficult and for world game it will be a long time before there is tournament onto that but let's hope for the best could happen I mean, alex says that yeah because all the grandmasters were playing online i guess everyone was trying to become i guess if you are yeah, in this day and age where the best computer is going to be better than the best human, it's so tempting, isn't it? Yeah. And of if people are actually making a living from this, then yeah. And a quick shout out to Lucky Numbers, which I only found out about because I saw you'd played it so much. I was like, what is this game that but um I would agree it is really nice for just a quick six minute thing. I want to talk about the other types of games that you might not be able to play on online in general. Would you agree that speed games and dexterity games are pointless, or do you think there is no. a case to be made for uh, no. doing a speed game? Yeah, a speed game, it depends on wh what is what, but it makes no sense. Like, uh, Uno, uh, you know, is okay. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Uno but... isn't a speed game. There's no real time element to it, it's just a fast. Yeah, yeah but. Uh, like uh i mean something like jungle speed which you must well, know. well what's the matter of having a jungle speed online like i mean like it's you you can have some fun playing it but i think the best for the game is to be played in real life like most mm -hmm. of the board game uh i don't think and i don't uh trust anybody that would say that online uh, board game will kill the board game actually ah, i think, sorry uh, i think <laughs> i think i think it's it's totally different and i think um you you can't you can't you can't kill the board game the real board game because it's meant to be played with real player and like we're we're just a glimpse of what the board games are so for most of the game i think they are not playable online but we try to make it happen I'm and not it, going it to... works for some game, but there is some games uh, where it didn't work. I, I think, even if it's not a speed game, but uh, actually, yeah, of course, dexterity games, speed games, not the easy ones to put online. Yeah, of course. Uh, social deduction games. Do you think it isn't it's a similar position to speed auctions, games? Where auctions could happen. No, it all social on deduction, a... like Werewolf. It's. It's working actually. There is some websites that did it very well, but they have to manage things differently. Uh, we have it on BGA. It's working quite okay, not the best way. But there is a tone of Salem, which well was uh, handling it uh, very well, and also some uh, online apps that were doing it quite well. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's uh, always linked to a um, to a game but not and not to a mechanics but how the game uh bridges the mechanics together that make mm. that makes it not possible like of course you, there is no sense to put a jenga on a bga but uh i'm pretty sure there is some we can do. what i'm hearing is that even if we might all prefer to play Town of Salem or One Night Ultimate Werewolf or whatever in real life. Of course we would. But frankly, I would also prefer to play Steamworks in real life. And I'm still happy to play it the second time. I played it with Xates the other week and so like, yeah, this is an interesting game. And it do you think I'm not going to hold you to anything? I understand that Asmodee has a lot of their own opinions. Do you think it's worth it's for a company such as Asmodee, for example, to put every game on, even if it's not necessarily the best. Do you think it makes sense to have Jungle Speed? Okay, you click the totem in the middle. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure it, it will never happen. Hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they are not stupid, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. Actually, if it was like that kind of mega corp, like yeah, they will do that. Okay, let's put the triangle spin online. No, please no, <laughs> no, no, no. But I think they are, they are, they are not stu stupid. And by the way, they don't uh, see BGA as a replacement of board games. Actually, they think of it more like. Do you remember advertising? Uh, yes, but more than that. Uh, offering, do you remember that uh, blessed uh, time where we had uh, showers on computers? You know, showers on computers. Showers, yeah. You 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 could try the game, and it it wasn't the full experience, and uh, it could have worked. Crystal cats, lovely to see you. And yeah, I it's, uh, it's have like no a, idea what you're talking about with showers with computers. I'm going to have to look this up after. This no, interview. but that's fine. But the, what I want to say is that it's more like a way to try a game before you buy it. And it's totally awesome because it's not like you're just giving the game or like you you're not just renting the game. We take care of the rules, so you cannot make any mistakes. So you are one one hundred percent sure it works like it should work. Mm -hmm. So it's a yeah a way to have a demo of the game if you want to buy the real one. And if the one online is okay, is enough for you? That's okay. That's uh, that, uh, that's totally okay. So let's talk a wee bit more about the community and. You talked about bringing people in. It talks about, you know, yeah, how you talked about the fact that community is a big difference between Board Game Arena and potentially BoardSpace.net and Yucata.de. What features do you are you most proud of? And how do tournaments kind of integrate into that? uh what, what what do you mean because like like what we are how how do you work to make it a good community how and what are the main challenges of moderating this community and yeah like when people do stuff are people how are people surprising you i'd like to talk a wee bit about the board game arena community in general i think <laughs> i i think maybe maybe because it's a big mess which is helpful to to sort things up like there is so many different <laughs> people from different countries when it's a big mess it's easier to just pick things and make it best and take it out and make it the best every time it's always better than having like people structured and asking for things like in bga every everybody can talk and actually you can see that even on the forum we let people criticize us because that's okay uh but don't do it too much please uh, but <laughs> actually actually that's okay because we're open to that and we hear uh, people crying out loud for to have anything but we're just picking things from that uh, like it's a big mess like brr, we want that we want that we're just going with the crime taking the bits that is interesting to us make it better and wait for it it's like yeah, it lo all looks like a very old uh, village with some strange people. And you just take the best of it every time. And it works because it goes less and less noisy until everybody is satisfied and goes to another um, topic. So yeah, that's why uh, I wanted to make sure for the New Year announcement that we will take care of the um, profile management and friends management too. So that way you can, like you did, like you do there, mm -hmm. the say and the she say. I think that's really important, but that's something that the website is 10 years old. Come on, it needs time, of course, but it will be changed. Yeah, for sure. And like, have, there, have people done something to surprise you and you think, whoa, these people, like, yeah, let me actually use, keep with this one a minute longer. Just because are people mainly playing with their friends? Are people mainly playing with strangers? What's the split if you are willing and able to say? I can I, I can't say, but actually there is like it's it's I, I think that's a draw. Like 
there, there is as many people playing with strangers as there is many people playing with uh, uh, all together. Uh, we have uh, what's what's the most amazing is actually seeing people playing with their relatives because they are far or they are sick, then cannot mm. see each other. And it's really cool to see that the usual uh, Skype call has turned it to BGA as a, a weekly game where they can talk together using the the mic and the and the webcam, and they can uh, like uh, talk about life while playing, and they're having fun into that. And this is a very cool thing to know. Of course, there is some things that are a little bit like sadder. Like uh, I I haven't imagined how much it could affect me to get some messages of people just uh, sending us messages like, please, could you stop my premium account? And I was like, yes, of course, but uh, uh, I need a I need a reason. I need the I need a, a real reason from the account owner. And uh, oh, that that was my dad. He enjoyed BGA, but he died. And and you're just reading the email, and you're like, okay, that's fine. Okay, there is many people every day dying, but that's okay. That's humans. And you have people insulting us, and you have people like, of course, sending us very nice messages, like some page long of people like telling uh, how BJ helped helped them uh, keeping their board game night to play together or playing with the sick ones. And this is very like heartwarming every time. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's all about what I like about BJ. It's all about what is exciting actually. It's, uh, it's all about life itself. It's, there is no cheating. There is people just angry. There is just people happy, uh, people living, dying. We even have people getting married from a meeting on BGA. So that's amazing. BGA is uh, life. It's online, it's a community, but it's about humans playing with humans. And that's why we don't have any robots playing with you. And I love what i i find it's interesting to hear the little just okay robert used to play always with strangers and in the past year there's a lot more playing with people that robert knows more that makes lots of sense and i would actually be interested to chat with more people who are just really into games and playing to see yeah. hey, um like maybe in a few weeks if people i'm going to reach out to people to say hey let's make a regular thing maybe on saturdays people saying hey this is how we play games this is how because it, as you say it's, it's all about those humans and those human connections but you mentioned tournaments like cheating it's not cheating it's just about the happiness and the anger and the frustration and the sadness and the good times and the forming bonds but then when you have a tournament does that ever, is there a risk of it taking away from that? Because you mentioned, yeah, when you've got a words game, you might end up cheating. If you had a tournament of chess, that's probably not going to happen from what I'm understanding. You're not just not going to open that can of worms on BGA. So, yeah, do, what's your thoughts on tournaments? Uh, Are they going to become a bigger yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. a smaller thing, or yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I think it, 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 it will get better as uh, arena mode is getting better too. But the thing is that for now you can you can of course cheat like on, onto every game. But we want to to have it played the most serious way we can. Like mm -hmm. it's tournament. You you don't have to cheat. We are not okay with that. For now, we can't uh, stop it. But the thing is that for now, it's COVID time for a certain period of time. So in the end, people having the first ranking into arena mode or uh, tournament will have to face during real events, the other players, like face to face, and they couldn't cheat anymore. So there is one point where we will discover who has cheated and who has not. So for the moment, it's online. It's only online. We try to take care of it as much as we can because we want it to be taken as seriously as we can. But you always know, always know that in the end, if you are that good, we will, we will find out if it's mm -hmm. true or not, of course. Because we really want to value very strong people, like the people that are really the best internationally 
we know because we were checking for the top 20 uh, players of each game. We are checking closely about the statistics, how do they play, and we are analyzing games. And whenever we have a doubt, we are asking first to the player because we are fair. Like, hey, are you actually cheating or getting some help or anything like that? Because, yeah. How, how would you even ask that? So, I mean, do you just ask, are you cheating that? If because someone asked me that, I would feel very defensive. I would feel very attacked. I'm yeah, but I, I, I don't ask it that, that way exactly. I try to be more subtle, but that's what I meant in the end. The thing is that we only do it where we are 100% sure. That's obvious. Like, we're not doing that whenever you play uh, 10 or 20 games that way. But when there is close to 1,000 games played that way. So we know it's obvious. There is a reason. There is something. Uh, so we're just asking at first. No problem. Just tell us, like, uh, are you actually using any scripts or getting some help or getting a king-making scheme where you have people playing to make you win or anything like that? Just to, to make sure the the guy has a um, has a way to tell us the guy also girl it happened uh, can tell us uh, yeah I cheated how do you know that that way we can make sure our tools are working pretty well to detect that on the other way when it they doesn't cheat and they are good enough uh, we we are checking that like we are doing some uh, games. With them, we take someone that is playing the game very well, we know, in real life, and we put a, an account, and we make him play against him just to check how good he is playing, if it's true, actually. So, yeah, in the end, we always find a way to sort if the game is played the right way or not. And uh, if in some very rare cases we can't, that's okay. We, we, we will see when we will have game in real life because it always ends up in real life anyway. You always had people cheating online, even for video games or anything like that, mm. because you have no way to check by them. And we I'm really excited that. by what you're saying about real life tournaments. Are you suggesting that maybe in the year 2023, because you know, let's not assume that 2021 or even 2022 we will have, but in a couple of years, we will have, okay, Board Game Arena sponsored tournaments. Okay, let's get people to somewhere yeah. and have the top people from this game. Yeah, and exactly. would that be sponsored by Board Game Arena? Do you imagine working with the publisher, having the publisher sponsoring it? There is uh, many ways we are looking into that. One of the first things is that we have the Mind Sports Olympiad. I don't know if you know about them. But actually, they came to us to make the tournament online because they used to make it uh, in England. I don't know exactly where. London, but... yes. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, and, something uh... like diving chess, you can't do that. So I don't know if you know diving chess, where you can only you your thinking time is as long as you can hold your breath. So when it is your yeah. turn, if you are not underwater, <laughs> you're disqualified. Yeah, uh, 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 Ethan uh, told me about that. Yeah, he's a guy mm -hmm. from Minnesota. Yeah, and this is amazing and. This is the way we want to handle things. Like we can uh, handle the qualif qualifications online, and we can have the real tournament uh, uh, live. So yeah, they, we want we want to support that because to us, a board game is before all played on, onto a real table with real people. So that's good. That BJ is working. Good way to advertise to to learn about the rules, uh, but it will never replace the real board game. So yeah. We want to support that, and it will come. Right? We don't know exactly where, but we are talking with people from many uh, tournaments uh, in real life to support like the qualifications or anything like that. So yeah, it's going, it's going on. That sounds it, it really exciting. I can take. definitely see a case for this becoming more and more regular thing, as you say, because maybe we get, okay, we've, Obviously, if you do a single elimination tournament, well, that's not really deciding the best player, is it? That's a rubbish way to determine yeah. the best player. Really, what you want to do is spend a long time. Everyone plays everyone else, but round robin is boring for the players. So you want to maybe do some sort of Swiss tournament. And yeah, I mean, the other thing about people cheating is because you have your ELO system. So I guess when you are, can I ask a little bit behind the scenes? Because it's not super obvious for someone looking in. Yeah, How much does ELO 
how much does that affect it when you're being paired with people? Because it is, it does occur to me that if a game is popular enough, well, if some people are cheating at chess, but there's other people that I'm playing with, I don't care about the people who are cheating because I'm not very good at chess and I just play against people who also aren't very good. Same with any game. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is that the law is uh, uh, always uh, evolving. Like, we're uh, that's something Greg is really into, like uh, managing the stats and making sure that it means something to have uh, uh, a score of uh, 200 or uh, 500. That that really matters to him. Like that's the core of his problems right now. So um, the ELO system is really evolving every time. And we know that people think that sometimes it's a bit curious in its way of working but on our side we know that it's done the right way because it's yeah it's a mix of many different things like uh the karma the ranking the game you came from the game you're going to and uh it's a full algorithm i couldn't tell about not just because i wouldn't but because it's way too complicated oh I mean, yeah i understand we, sh we should have a whole show to talk just about the exact way it works mm -hmm. for everybody. But what I, ca I can tell for now is that we try to make it the most fair for everybody. And uh, that's not something easy to achieve, but we really think that's going the right way. People have been investigating this subject for many years. Yeah. I would, before we talk no more about the community, obviously the way that Board Game Arena makes a lot of the money is through subscriptions where you get the benefits like um, this whole list of premium games, some of that money going to the publishers, which are publish and partners and small things that don't really cost you anything, such as having extra statistics, getting to choose your color, which is like, OK, and it's it's actually you know, it's not too expensive. But interestingly, what you also let people do is if you win 20 different games in a month, then you can keep being premium forever without paying anything. And I wanted to ask, why do you reward people for winning new games? What's the benefit to the community? I understand rewarding people for making translations and for do doing those kinds of things but what's the benefit to the community of winning new games uh, i can understand that in terms of like pure business if you're just thinking for the business it's like a bit stupid but actually the the thing is not to make a about bga is not to make money uh it's it is to make of course salary for us uh which is uh, quite new <laughs> and uh to uh to pay for the servers and the infrastructure and the publishers and developers so this is the main um the main use for the money getting uh, we get from the premium paying for publishers and developers then us and the infrastructure and that's it like we don't get by our side that big of a money that's why we are only four people because we we give we give a lot of it to uh, to the publishers to the people that actually need that because uh, now there is not a lot of people actually buying board games there is they are buying some but we are improving uh, the sales of the board game we know that and they need that they need that help because there is no more fair uh, no more uh, conventions. So there is a real loss for them. So the, we're helping uh, them that way. We have the, also the infrastructure, which is quite big, but we want to be fair. And I used to be uh, a very poor guy. Actually, I used to live with my parents in a in a very small villages at the at the bottom end of France, as there was only 100 pe uh, yeah 100 people living there. 40 kilometers from the first supermarket. So yeah, we were pretty poor. And I remember as well as Greg and Emmanuel that we were not rich kids and it's really important to be able to play for free. So that's why. But 
Actually, anybody can play for free on this board game, but if you want that e small extras, like creating tables on premium games or uh, uh, removing some limitations, like the color you can choose, uh, we wanted you, anybody, to be able to, uh, to get that extra by giving back to the community. So by playing games, actually what you are actually doing is that you're actually uh, getting into new board games you didn't know. Because most of the new players that come to BGS that are not uh, fluent in board games uh, just came to BGA because they know one game. Mm -hmm. And we really push them to discover other board games. Because when you have played more than 20 board games, you never stop after that, most of the time. You just like want to discover a whole new world to you. So that's why we push forward that way. But there is many other ways uh, to help BGA to gain free uh, premium, like helping into translating uh, some lines of board games, which is really helpful because we support 40 languages, but we don't want to have automatic translations. So we have people actually helping it. And uh, yeah, you can of course get sponsor uh, of your friends, which is the easiest way to get the premium. <laughs> like just sending a link, spreading the word. Yeah, this is uh, the easiest one to get. But we have people translating, uh, helping to translate uh, BGA and uh, that are not getting, no, that didn't use uh, their own point. And uh, that's very kind of them, but they can use it. They're here for that. And you know, if you, I'm sure that's 100% of the people who are watching this know Board Game Arena. But I guess, um, yeah, if you don't already know it, then why not share that link with the bits at the end? Because it's not like I'm pushing... It, <laughs> there is that slight ickiness of, okay, now is it like a pyramid scheme? Is it kind of... but? You know what, if it's not costing the other person anything, then it's, no, actually, you're just sharing the love. It's genuinely, you know what, I think that McCall would enjoy this. And even before this interview, I was thinking, you know what, yeah, when you were talking about people um, getting together to play games with each other once a week or something like that. It's like, yeah, you know what? That is a nice way, especially for a non-gamer who doesn't want to keep all those things in their head. Now, as we start wrapping this up, let me ask, what do you attribute to the growth and acquisition of Board Game Arena? Now, I'm not asking you to say through... We've already touched on this a good part, but why what Asmodee is getting out of it and they're getting your knowledge and but they are shareholders which you know they're getting the same as any other shareholder now if board game arena continues to grow then they will continue to get money so good for them but yeah what do you have anything that you can say yeah this is why we are growing why or why Asmodee decided to buy us Actually, actually, the option was uh, we could have stayed uh, independent. We we could have stayed totally independent from any uh, uh, places from the board game industry, uh, because it's been years. Uh, people are trying to buy uh, BGA. Like it's not uh, new. Uh, we've been uh, asked about uh, selling many, 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 many times during the last five years. The thing is that. Um, Emmanuel and uh, Greg are uh, tired. Uh, they fighted with literally no money to live for years. And now that it's working well and they have the insurance of BGA uh, being the same, at least for the next five years, maybe, maybe, maybe more, I guess. Um, they know the baby is uh, working by himself. So they don't have to care much about that. The real good thing for them is that now they can just uh, breathe. Like mm -hmm. the most of the... To get more employees, to get some of those responsibilities taken off their shoulders. Yeah, and it's the goal is not to be uh, an overemployed company, but to make just uh, people enjoying what they do on 2BGA uh, as much as they can. And um, yeah, it's... 
I mean, it's easy, like any megacorp could tell, yes. Our employees are the best. They're well treated. They have fruits for. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like not not working that ironic way, you know. BJ is just that some that just some friends uh, working uh, together as as much as they can, and it's not about the money. Uh, and actually, it's not about the money on Asmodee's side. For Asmodee, it's a way to have a. A permanent showroom of their board game online, which is like, and the thing is that they bought us for an obvious reason. That is, someone else was going to do it anyway. It was just a matter of time and money, of course. But to us, it was a matter of uh, vision. So yeah, the Asmodee acquisition is good because it rewards Greg and Emmanuel for their strong work during years about that because that's a. Uh, it, having a, a w website like BGA is not just your daily work. Like you can work five or eight hours a day and you're doing something else during the night. No, working on BGA is having a call at 3 a.m. in the morning, just telling you we have a huge problem. Server one is has fallen, server one has fallen. Save private Ryan, call me back, call me back. And it's all about that. It's about like having emergencies, take things to take care at the last minute. Yes, that's basically your kid. You have to uh, to raise uh, having four dads, and yes, that's that's a full time job. It's not something you can left. We had no holidays, no vacancies because of that. I can't get away from the computer more than a day because I know that I will have as many emails. Uh, as I can uh, onto the support. Like doing the support a day is close to uh, more than 100 emails actually a day. To you, to which one you have to answer like the best you can, even if it's from um, people asking stupid, obvious questions or sending in insults, you you have to answer them every time. So yes, that the. Being acquired by uh, Asmodee is actually a way for us to relax, to just make sure, okay, we could have not do that, but that will bring us some huge games we are striving to get for years now, and we will be able to get just because of that. So, yeah, you, you can think we're evil, no problem. We know what we're doing, but actually I think that's a win-win on both sides. We just need to take care of what's going on, but shouldn't be anything bad at all. I don't think so. And it sounds really exciting for the future. Um, before we finish, other is there anything else you can tell us about the future? About you've already given us some strong hints, and um, yeah, I'm like, just remembering. Yeah, 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 yeah. just. Just so uh, I, I, I will, if I can tell an advice uh, for myself as well, for everybody, but I guess mostly for myself, don't be afraid of the future. Like it's that you, you can't, you can tell what's going on. You can just expect that people will do their best and whatever they do, you have no power onto that. Just keep, keep into that. And if it doesn't suit your needs, or if it doesn't, uh, if you don't like it, that's not a problem. It happens. You can you can make your own, like everybody can. But yeah, it takes work, and you can't blame people for like wanting to do it their way, especially when they take care of the people that helped uh, bring the community so high. So don't be afraid. BGA, BGA will still be BGA. It will have the wooden uh, background, ugly background. It will have people like you you will not like some you will like you will make new friends and we will have game you you will love and some games will never come to the bga too and 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 that's okay i guess like there is uh uh some more important things in life than you have to care about bga but thanks for the love thanks for the love you're sharing with us because we also know that uh being angry about something is showing us how much you love it so that's okay we that's a really good thing to keep in mind 
actually, I have one final question that I want to ask. Is there any games that you would... If you have one game right now, you personally, that you would like to have on BGA, that isn't on BGA, what would you like to have? One hint. I got a... <laughs> okay, um... So, this has been a lovely show. If you want to check me out, I'm stuffabez.com, stuffabez.bigcrystal.com, twitter.com slash stuffabez, instagram.com slash stuffabez, twitch.tv slash stuffabez. I'm here every day, um, although Friday I'm not here at 10 a.m. UK time, and youtube.com slash stuffabez for the old episodes, stuffabez.com slash discord. And, yeah, if you want to check out my future streams, check out there, because, remember, after my 300th episode on Thursday, I am going to be taking some breaks. Because I've streamed 300, I've almost, today, 297, I've almost streamed 300 days without a break. And I want to have like one day off. So just to be like, okay, I'm going to get up late today. That's what I want to do. Just get up late and then maybe go out. Anyway, have a walk. I don't know. And if you want to um, check out Ian, well, Ian's available over the internet. You can Google there. There's, of course, Sports Game Arena. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, there's a lot of people watching the chat that I'm thinking, you know what? I know at least one of you is looking for a job. And I know that you have all this stuff. Um, English native speaker, living in Europe, excellent writing skills, good diplomatic skills, comfortable to work remotely. And you know German and you have basic skills with graphic manipulation tools are um basically i think that there's multiple people within this chat who i would encourage to apply for this job because so um yeah definitely check out that link but yeah is there anywhere else that you like to be found on the internet ian Wherever, like uh, Twitter, Instagram, like uh, any, any, anywhere. But I'm just posting uh, daily stuff, so nothing personal. But the thing is that many stuff I'm working on have the uh, usual, you know, uh, contract you can talk about. So whenever I can, I will talk. But I'm just sharing things about what I like, like toys, uh, traveling whenever I can. And uh, yeah, mostly about toys and board games anyway. So yeah, please, please follow me if you want to have some fun together like i don't bite <laughs> <laughs> it has been lovely chatting with you thank you so thank much you. thank Please. you like it was so amazing for me to to be there because i i i saw your message a long time ago you asked for for us to have a message right before this and it, it was amazing because uh, most of the time i try to improve my english i um watch, watching the show and you're such a lovely person with uh Aww with what, what's happening and and that's really nice and i really enjoyed to be there just hear you singing in real time so yeah everything that that was a lovely show yeah absolutely oh, thank you but we have talked about so much and it would be lovely to have you on again we've talked about playing with strangers which could be when an entire on. topic on its own or actually if, 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 if you ever stream any board games on bga like i i, I can join, join anytime just drop me a message if i'm available i will join lovely Oh. And thank you, Hal. That's lovely to hear. And for those who don't know, Hal's, um, yeah, a really talented um, Hal and Ruth, I want to say. Um, sorry, I hope I'm getting, is it Ruth debut? I hope I'm not messing things up. But anyway, I, I hope, but thank you so much. We've talked about playing with strangers, playing with friends, about how it started with Gregory and Emmanuel, how you're feeling so overworked these days, how um, yeah, you can't fit a table onto a screen, how that is such a challenge. And honestly, like, I'm never going to enjoy Board Game Arena as much as I enjoy playing something on the table when I can look here and see okay, I can look so many places and see the table and then I look over there and I see the face and I see the face and then I do not I mean it's, but no, it is, you've done a great job. We talked about at being bought by Asthma Day. We talked about making sure you're not exploiting people. We talked about payments via, you know, publishers, how 
publishers can hire developers or and sometimes you need to have volunteers is the sad truth of it and maybe that's okay as long as people aren't misled i think that's the important thing if i say hey please develop this game for me i guarantee it will lead to some amazing work no i would be lying how can i guarantee such a thing but if i say please make this game for me i will be very grateful and then you know at least that's something that i can genuinely say i'm not but um, we talked about improving the user interface, which is something that you're continuing to try to do in the forthcoming months, years, and maybe migrating to a completely new look. We talked about the community, about the freedom that you want to give people, about how as you clamp down on cheating, that might make things worse for people who are not cheating. And you really want to prioritize the people who are not cheating. Yeah. Because it's for them that you're building this community. You don't want to be beholden to those people. Just, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, we talked about testing everything. We talked about changes. We didn't talk about robots, um, like playing with AI, if you know what I mean. That's a conversation for a different time, potentially. We men briefly mentioned that there are word games, which I was unaware of, Letter Tycoon and Hardback and about the tutorials, which I like the fact that you are willing to say, yeah, you know what, the tutorials are bad, we need to improve them, and yeah, this bit is bad, the rules enforcement, how that can be such a challenging thing about having subscriptions, how you do care for the community, how you are getting people to spread the word, to explore more of these games, and for that, it's also a benefit to the publisher. If I, as a publisher, know that people are being motivated to win my game at least once, then that means, okay, even if, you know, it's not the most popular game that people don't know about, there might be some people who are motivated to explore the game, yeah. which is a really nice thing. And, yeah, we talked about in real life tournaments, everyone coming together, the top 20 people or something, or maybe the top eight, I don't know, having like a big clash of titans, how cool would that be? Like the awesome, top yeah. few people in the world and just, yeah, then you could, it would be a really nice way, to, a cheap way, in fact, for a company to build that community. And yeah, I would love to be involved. Now, I am, of course, biased as a, yeah, publisher and player and lover of games, but thank you, everyone. Um, it has been lovely having you here, of course, Ian, but everyone in chat. And so Hal says, Ruth is indeed Hal's partner and design partner. So um, if you want to check out Cryptid, which is a lovely game, check that out. Cryptid isn't on BGA, is it? No, not for the moment. Yeah, you should get it on BGA. Hal's right here. And <laughs> it's a great game. <laughs> So, Sorry, you know, yeah. there is three ways to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for watching, Alex. Thank you, Nicholas. And um, it, it's been really nice, as always, having you on. And Robert says, I managed to get my real job done at the same time. <laughs> and Robert is playing Carcassonne with Al. So Robert is not only multitasking, but triple tasking. So doing real work, playing Carcassonne and listening in. And wow, that's, I don't know whether to call, at least they're enjoying life. That's good stuff. So thank you everyone. And thank you to Xate and like everyone, all my moderators. I'm actually going to check who's, um, everyone who's still there. Um, it's Rob and Yoda and yeah, I, everyone like just so much love. Thank you for yeah, love, joining yeah. in. And we come to the final section where I ask, is there anything you want to share? Something you're looking forward to? Maybe something that you just want to do. You don't really want to do it, but you want to have it done. Maybe it's something super exciting that you want to get off your chest or something boring that you just want to be beholden to or something serious or s something frivolous. That's the question. Over to you. What are you up to? You can share only if you want to. <laughs> Uh, I would just share a message like uh, try to be to be kind to each other. The, that's uh, the best. That's really the best. Wow, that is. I love this when someone comes on just for an episode and you're not 
hey, check this out, that's going to happen, but like, just be kind. That is such a heartwarming thing. Everything you're doing, do it with kindness. And if you're criticizing someone, do it with the intention to improve that person, to be kind, rather than with the intention to beat down. It's yep. so easy nowadays to say, hey, that thing was bad, but do it with love. Do it with love. I do it with love. And love to mm. you, Beth, for that. Spread the, spread the word. Spreading the word. Thanks, thanks to everybody. That was very nice. And, yeah, as I wrap up, um, what am I up to? I'm going to, yeah, be sending out a bunch of messages. I really, really need to take some photos that I might actually do that once I've had my breakfast. Um, it's a late breakfast, I'm aware. I nor You could say I don't eat breakfast, but, you know, at some point you break your fast. Anyway, so I'm <laughs> going to do that. So I'm going to send some photos, which I really need to do to get a pitch in to someone about to game that some people might have played tomorrow i am going to be discussing play testing so if you are a budding designer or if you want to just join in the conversation then come in tomorrow at the same time tomorrow evening i'm playing balanceable wednesday i'm meeting paul stapleton game designer and comic artist and thursday is my 300th episode this is going to be epic i'm going to go from like 10 a.m until like maybe 6 p.m or seven i don't know something like that i will be taking some very short breaks where i let the video play and then i take a very short comfort break for like a minute and i'll be doing some more dancing during it because you know i can't be in a chair for eight hours do you know what i mean and um friday i will be taking a break saturday dutch yoda sunday i'll be taking a break next monday meeting dave turksy and that is that um Please share, spread the word. If this has been a chat that you think other people would like to hear, let other people know about it. If you would like to be on the show, let me know. And oh, we've got um, <laughs> who did that? Um, Aquasulis is awesome, says Dream Elements. Who did that? Um, and yeah, Aquasula says, I'm a fan of Cryptid. Alex is finishing a playtest of Kingmaker later. Cool, that's with Alan Paul. I'm the only player without royal family members, so it will require some deviousness to win. Um, and yeah, I will have food with me during the first day stream. It has been lovely. Um, yeah, we are about to say bye-bye, Ian, just for... A moment if you can hang on i apologize for how long it's um <laughs> taking to wrap up now is the time when i go and i see okay who else is on twitch to read we are going to read the most wonderful musician you know amadeus music uh actually now I'm going to do someone different because I've not Adam Q777. And so we are going to read that person playing some music. It's been lovely. Thank you very much. I don't think there's anything left to say. Is there? <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> okay. See you later, Liz. Bye, 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 bye. This is a goodbye song. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you for watching along. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye-bye. This is the end of the show. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And now it's time to go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is a goodbye song. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching along. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is the end of the show. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> And now it's time to go. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. That's it. That's the end. <laughs>